writing formula ionic compounds. Now, uh, this is actually more or less a replica of what we saw in the molecular compounds. Again, in an ionic compounds, you are again going to have two elements. Okay, and these could be anything. So let's say uh, I'll take an example of magnesium chloride. Magnesium chloride basically comprises of two things magnesium and chloride. Right? Now, in both these cases, what is going to happen is that one of them is going to be a positively charged ion and the other one is a negatively charged ion. So if I talk about magnesium chloride in particular, the magnesium ion is positively charged to the extent of 2 and the chloride ion is negatively charged to the extent of 1. Right? The rule for writing a formula of an ionic compound is that whenever you are writing the formula, basically the one which has a positive ion okay, is written on the left side. So when we write magnesium chloride, we don't write chloride magnesium, we write magnesium chloride. Why? Because magnesium is the one which has the positive charge on it or it's a cation if I may call it. right? On the other hand, chloride is the one which has a negative charge on it or it is the anion. So when writing a formula, the one which is having a positive one is written on the left side. So we will write magnesium on the left side, right? And chloride is going to be written on the right side, right? You may say it chloride or maybe uh, let's use chlorine instead of chloride, right? Then after this, we just write the valency of the ions of magnesium, which is 2 over here and 1 over here. Although this is the one which is negative and this is the one which is positive. The idea is that, you know, in order to have magnesium chloride formed, basically you need as many negative ions, okay, as is the number of positive cations over here, right? So let's say for every two positive ions, how many chlorine items are you going to require? You will obviously require two ions of chlorine. That is because once you have two ions of chlorine, then the total negative charge will be two negative. And two negative and two positive will actually result in zero. Something which is required to form this uh, compound. Right? So either we work it out this way or the other simpler way of doing it through crossovers is let me just put in this positive sign over here. The other way is that we just do a crossover of the valencies of the ions to each other. So when we talk about magnesium, I write Mg, right? Because it is the cation, so I write it on the left side, right? And I take the valency of chlorine, which is how much? 1. I'm not going to consider this negative sign over here, right? Because ultimately, in the ultimate analysis, this negative and positive are going to go and cancel each other. The second one is chlorine. Or when it comes in, we pronounce it as chloride. Right? And it is going to take over the valency of magnesium through a crossover. Right? So the formula of this ionic compound will be Mg1Cl2 or simply MgCl2. We just ignore this. 1. Right? Similarly, let's take another example and this time, uh, okay, I tell you that you have carbonate, okay, CO3, which has a valency of 2 minus, right? And you have sodium, Na, which has a valency of 1 plus, right? Now, considering what we learned earlier, in this particular video itself, let me tell you how we are going to write the formula of this thing. So the first thing is, we have to write either of these two, right? Which one is the one which has to be written on the left? The one which has to be written on the left is the one with the positive charge or the cation. So when I write the formula, I'm going to write Na or sodium first, right? And which is the one which has to be written afterwards? It's the one with the negative sign or carbonate. Now what is going to be 
the subscript over here. So we do the crossovers. Right? For sodium, what do I have? I'll get a valency of 2 negative, so I'll just write 2 as it is. For carbonate, what do I have? I have 1 positive, so I just need to put in carbonate in the complete formula and write 1 over here. Please note that when I talk about this, this 1 valency is going for this entire thing. It is not going separately for C and separately for O. Right? So we just write it as CO3 1. Because CO3 1 is itself is equal to CO3, so I can just simply write it as Na2CO3. And this becomes the formula for sodium carbonate. Right? You want one more example? Okay, let's take one more. And uh, this time we'll take, uh, I'll not give you the name of this, I'll just tell you that one bromide and aluminium okay bromide is written as br aluminium is written as al aluminium has a valency of 3 plus right and bromide has 1 minus so what was the first thing the first thing is how do we pronunciate the name obviously the one which is the cation comes first so obviously the name will be aluminium bromide right so what comes first al what comes afterwards br right now we do the crossovers so 3 plus goes to br so we write br 3 and aluminum gets what 1 minus al 1 we don't consider these negatives and positives why because ultimately it becomes equal or in other words, we just write ALBR3. Now, let me tell you one important result over here. Actually, I should have told you this thing before. If you look at this thing, right, if you look at this particular situation and try to find out how many other cations in this particular molecular compound, the number of cations is obviously equal to the number of atoms of, or sorry, the number of ions of aluminum, right? So, how many al uh, uh, Aluminum ion do we have? 1. So the number is going to be 1 into 3 plus or 3 positive. For bromide, what is the valency of the ion? The valency is 1 minus into. And how many ions do I have for bromide? I have 3 ions. 3. 3 negative. So effectively if you see in the formula what I am getting is that there are 3 positive cations and three anions. Effectively, the charge is zero because the number of cations is equal to the number of anions. Right? And this result follows in all the cases. So let me tell you in this particular case. If you look at it, sodium has a valency of one. Right? And carbonate has two minus. So when we have Na2, Na2 will effectively mean what? There are two ions of sodium or in other words, 2 into, what's the valency of 1 sodium? 1 or 2 positive ions. If we talk about carbonate, how many anions are there? There are basically 2 anions. Again, 2 positive, 2 negatives. You want to check this out with the first one as well? Let's see. Magnesium chloride. So how many cations do we have? 2 positively charged ions for magnesium. And for chlorine, how much is there? 1 minus for each one of them. And we have how many? 2 of them. So 2 into 1 minus or 2 anions. That is basically what holds on these ionic compounds together. So the positive charge is always equal to the negative charge in these cases.